All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 26. And in this lesson, students are going to be taking what they've learned about um, improper fractions and mixed numbers uh, and how to convert between the two. And we're going to be using that information in order to compare uh, a variety of numbers. Some of them are going to be improper fractions, some of them are going to be mixed numbers, and uh, we're also going to be using more of an informal technique in terms of we're going to think about the numbers on the number line rather than that standard algorithm that a lot of us learned back in the day where we you have to get a common denominator. We're not going to really focus on that right now. We're really going to use kind of an informal uh, technique based in number sense. So let's get going. So the directions say to plot the following points on the number line without measuring. And basically what we're doing is we're going to plot these on the num number line. And once numbers are located on the number line, you now can compare them because numbers to the right are larger than numbers to the left. All right. So uh, this is a nice informal way for students to compare fractions. Just think of them and where they live on the number line. So where would 2 and 1 sixth live? Well, the idea of 2 and 1 sixth would say, well, cut this into six pieces, and there is 2 and 1 sixth. Now, where would 3 and 1 fourth live? Well, 3 and 1 fourth, I mean, 3 and 3 fourths. 3 and 3 fourths says, cut this distance from 3 to 4, into four pieces, and technically we'd, we would cut everything into four pieces, but let's just, uh, this is the important part right here, and three and three-fourths would live right here. Now the trick is, well, where would 33 ninths live? So I'm going to put 33 ninths down here, and we know uh, from previous videos that 33 ninths. Well, let's see. Well, 9 ninths plus 9 ninths plus 9 ninths. Well, that's 27 ninths. I don't have enough because if I, I can't go over 36, uh, 33. So 9 ninths plus, okay, so 9 ninths plus 9 ninths plus 9 ninths. That's 27. And then I have 6 more ninths to go to equal 33 ninths. So this, if I added up 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 6, I would get 33. And so that's equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 6 ninths. That's equal to 3 and 6 ninths. So the idea is, oh boy, we know that 3 and 6 ninths doesn't live in this area, in this neighborhood. 3 and 6 ninths lives in this neighborhood somewhere. And six ninths, we would have to cut from, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We have to cut from three to four. We have to cut that into nine equal sized pieces. And this is going to be tricky because the red is there already. So let me do it in black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the from three to four. I'm going to cut it into three pieces. And then I'm going to cut each one of those into three equal-sized pieces. And I'm trying to, oh my goodness, I'm trying to make them nice equal-sized pieces, and I'm trying to ignore the, the red underneath. Now, we're supposed to locate three and six-ninths. Well, here's three. One-ninth, two-ninths, three-ninths, four-ninths, five-ninths, six-ninths, right here. So there is 3 and 6 ninths. And so this was kind of a real subtle question. Boy, parents and teachers, I wouldn't stress too much if your student at this point in the game isn't sure whether 6 ninths or 3 fourths uh, is larger. Um, just get the idea of taking your improper fraction, in this case 33 ninths, turn it into a mixed number, and then locate it the best you can at this point. Um, so now we automatically know stuff. We know that 2 and a 6th is the least of these three numbers, and we know that this number, which originally was 33 ninths, is less than 
3 and 3 fourths. So here we go with some really nice things that comparisons that we now know based on just looking at where uh, the numbers live on the number line. So parents and teachers, make sure your students understand why I just drew the symbols the way I did. So here it says compare the fractions, and you'll notice nowhere does it say we have to draw a number line. And that's because in this one, we can use logic. We know that they're both 5, right? So if we had a number line, um, we know that they're between, both numbers are between 5 and 6. And so the idea is all we have to do is now look at the fractions and we know which fraction, which number is larger because they're both somewhere between 5 and 6. And we see that 1 third is less than a half, 3 fourths is greater than a half, so automatically that tells us 5 and 3 quarters is greater. Uh, over here on question B, what we would do is we would, I would, if I were you, <laughs> I would turn both of these improper fractions into mixed numbers. So this is a great opportunity for students to practice what they learned in the previous video. And I'm going to just kind of jump ahead and say that 12 fourths is equal to 3, 25 eighths is equal to 3 and 1 eighth, and we now automatically know that 3 and 1 eighth is larger than 3, so that means we know that 25 eighths is larger than 12 fourths. And the last slide for this video is just more practice. Um, and so the idea is let's, um, as parents and teachers, I want you to just give your students an opportunity to practice with a, in a meaningful way turning improper fractions into mixed numbers. So the idea is, well, how many tens go into 23? Because we could say, well, that's 10 tenths plus 10 tenths plus 3 tenths. So that's really 2 and 3 tenths. And then here, well, 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 24. That's too much. So 8 times 2 is 16. So that's 16 eighths plus an extra 4 eighths. So that's really equal to 2 wholes and 4 eighths. So parents and teachers, did you notice I just used two different techniques for turning an improper fraction into a mixed number. So make sure I didn't lose any of your students. Make sure your students are feeling the freedom to choose the method that makes the most sense to them. And that tells us that 20 eighths is larger than 23 tenths, and that's because 4 eighths is equal to a half, 3 tenths is less than a half, and so we automatically know that this guy is bigger than this guy. I'm going to ignore this problem. Parents and teachers, um, this is a fun one. And it might be easier to think about how much is this guy missing before he reaches 3, and how much is this guy missing before he reaches 3. And that might be a nice conversation to, to talk about then which fraction is larger and which fraction is smaller. And that wraps up fourth grade, module five, lesson 26, where we are comparing a variety of fractions. Some of them were mixed numbers, and some of them were improper fractions.